Hey guys, welcome back. Spring has sprung and we're back at Jason's range where we can shoot 100 yards once again. Today we're out the range with a CZ Model 527 American. This is what they call a micro center fire on their website, which means uh, it chambers 762 by 39, or you can pick it up in 6.5 Grindel, even 300 Blackout. Our friends over at Big Daddy Unlimited sent us this rifle to evaluate free of charge. They also support us over on Patreon. We are 100% viewer supported. We do not accept any industry money. We don't take money from Big Daddy Unlimited. We don't take money from Federal. We don't take money from anybody. Again, we're 100% viewer supported over on Patreon. But Big Daddy Unlimited does support us in sending us stuff that we would otherwise have to buy. So we continue it and test it and give you our honest opinion. They don't care what we think of the products, whether we like it or hate it. But I chose this because I was legitimately interested in this rifle. When I visited the Czech Republic, I had seen these rifles for the first time, and it really piqued my interest because really, guys, this is a miniaturized Mauser action. And the Czechs have some experience with Mauser actions. What the heck, I'll just show you here really quick. This is a VZ24, and it's a 98K carbine. It's chambered an eight millimeter Mauser, but you'll notice it has that big signature extractor running right along the side of the bolt. But what this rifle is, is a true miniaturized Mauser. You can see that extractor claw on the bolt right here. So I really thought that was really kind of cool. A little miniature Mauser action chambering, a little miniature 30 caliber cartridge uh, really piqued my interest. And I really want to see what the 7.62x39 cartridge is capable of out of something other than an AK, right? So this is going to give us our chance to do that. Um, Anyway, so we did bring out some different types of ammunition. We'll talk a little bit about the scope here in a moment. We'll talk a little bit about the suppressor that's on there, and we'll talk a little bit about the features of the gun. But let's talk about the ammunition we're going to fire today, then we'll start shooting and get into the rest of the rifle here. So again, we'd like to thank our friends over at Federal who don't send us money, but they do send us ammo, and that is very valuable to us because it would be our uh, highest recurring cost here at the channel. And they have sent out some 123 grain uh, brass case, copper jack, and lead core ammunition from their American Eagle line. And also we have some fusion ammunition. Now this is their hunting line. We want to see how this performs out of the rifle because it really is, is intended to be a field rifle or a hunting rifle. And this one has 123 grain projectile. Then we brought out some affordable Red Army Standard steel cased bimetal bullet ammunition. And yes, it's safe to shoot in this rifle. And last but not least, we have some Engel Ballistic Research Subsonic 7.62x39s, just to see how quiet this setup is with the uh, suppressor on the rifle. Rifle fe feeds from a five round single stack magazine. So we're gonna go ahead and load the magazine up. I think we've got this, the, the rifle all zeroed in. Uh, we're gonna fire a couple of test groups and uh, just bring you guys along. This is its first range session, so I wanna try to develop some sort of an opinion about this rifle this afternoon. So let's get started with the evaluation by loading up some American Eagle and then doing some shooting for groups. I have five rounds of the Federal 124 grain ball ammunition loaded. This gets five stars on most of the sites that I read about in terms of consistency. It is a brass case, has 124 grain copper jacketed lead core bullet, and it is reloadable and it's affordable. You insert the five round magazine into the gun from the bottom, obviously, right here by my index finger is the mag release. It's only on one side. You push that in, and that releases the magazine. So that's how that locks into place. Now, we're going to start off talking about one of the things I really dislike about this rifle. On a traditional bolt action, the reason you have a bolt is so you can quickly run the action of the rifle, and typically you just grab it by its knob. If I do that with this gun and I push forward, I can't push it forward because the bolt is nose diving and creating so much friction, the harder I push, the less likely it is to go home. Now I can pull, pull back and down on it, grab the bolt at an awkward angle, put my thumb about midway on the charging handle. So now I'm kind of pushing like this in that motion to go home, and then it goes in very easily. So you're not just gonna grab the bolt and run it like you would a normal bolt action. You kind of have to grab it where you're pushing about midway on the handle to alleviate that tilting of the bolt so it goes smoothly into battery. I'll show you another way to accomplish smoothly loading the rifle, but I find that to be highly annoying, uh, and I, I would hope that CZ would find a way to remedy that because traditional 98K Mausers do not have that problem. Those bolts are lightning fast, just running it by holding it by the knob. All right, so back is safe. I'm sorry, back is fire, and forward is safe. It's the exact opposite 
of a Remington 700 action. So that if you shoot Remington 700s or you grew up with them, it's going to be exactly the opposite, which uh, may you know, cause you some trouble in the field. Hopefully you don't miss that deer. So that's safe, not fire, and that is fire, not safe. But you do have a bright red dot right there to tell you. So make sure you double check. All right, have a round chambered. You know, let's shoot a five shot group at 100 yards here and see what we can get with this Federal. Now I'm going to fire it with the trigger in its non-set position. It has a set trigger. On the next shot, I'll show you how that works. That cold bore shot every single time seems to go dead center. That's incredible. I want you guys to see this. That's a second cold bore shot that had dead center in the target, but once it starts to warm up, it starts the, dis the dispersion starts. I'm going to fire the next four rounds into another target because I want you to see this. The two cold bore shots that we've taken this morning went dead center, which is awesome for hunting. All right, now pull the bolt to the rear, kicks a spin out. The other thing you can do is just grab the bolt by the rear and it pushes right home and you don't have to worry about that bolt tilting again. All right, I'm going to shoot four into the target just below that one because I want you guys to see these two cold bore shots. It's just unre unbelievable. It keeps doing it. It's a good thing. All right, now what I didn't show you was the set trigger. So I'm gonna go ahead and reload the rifle. Now if I take my finger and put it behind the trigger and push forward, and it, when it clicks, now it's in its set position. It's literally a hair trigger. Now I'm gonna say, we'll, we'll measure the trigger pull both ways, but the, the non-set trigger pull is good enough for me. It's a very nice trigger, and it, you're not gonna accidentally touch a round off. So for hunting, I would leave the trigger in the non-set position. For target shooting, you may want to try the set position, but it has a lot of over-travel after it fires. That second shot went darn near right where the first one went on the target above it. Very, very light trigger. Very light trigger. So that's, that's actually a pretty cool feature. All right. I'm going to go ahead and set the trigger again. Because, man, that is a light trigger pull. If you just touch it, it goes off. And should have one more round. Now you'll notice how I'm pinching it with my thumb midway down the bolt handle, and it runs smoothly when I do that. Go ahead and set that trigger again. Get a little bit of mirage off my Trash Panda suppressor here. All right, so there's a four-shot group. We'll go ahead, let it cool off here, and we'll shoot a true five-shot group. But I want you guys to see those two center, uh, center punch shots that were on cold bores. Maybe the third one will do the same thing. We'll let it cool off here for a second. We're getting too much mirage. Let's talk about the features of the 527 American rifle. Let's start off on the barrel. First of all, here on the end, I have a Q Trash Panda, which is a lightweight 30 caliber can and uh, I've, I've had really good luck with the, uh, the Q suppressors. Very similar to the SIG products because <laughs> there's a relationship there. Now, this one has become a direct thread can because the muzzle device is stuck in the can, but there are ways to get that out. We just haven't done that yet. On the end of the barrel here, we have a 5, uh, a five 8 by 24 thread. Now, if you take a look at the barrel, it's, it's pretty much a lightweight profile barrel for a 30 caliber rifle. You'll notice it steps up right here where my uh, middle finger is. There's a step up to where it threads for the 5 8 by 24, but there's a slight taper going down to that point. It is a 16 and a half inch barrel. It has a twist rate of one and nine and a half inches. So every nine and a half inches, the bullet will make one revolution. And that seems to be a pretty good twist rate for those 123, 124 grain bullets. Coming back, and you can see it has a synthetic stock. Now, one thing I've also noticed is the stock is dangerously close to touching the barrel on this side. And that bothers me a little bit. I find myself constantly pinching it. It doesn't seem like it's touching, but if it ever touches, then it goes from free float to being touched by the stock, and that will negatively affect accuracy. So you can see that there might be maybe a, a manufacturing flaw in the stock on this particular rifle. I don't think it's touching. I'll run a piece of paper down there and double check. 
So we come on back here. We already talked about the little Minnie Mouser action. You can see if I pull the bolt out over here on this side of the receiver, there's a button. If you push that button, it's the opposite of a 98K. You pull that lever out this one, you push in, and then your little mini Mauser bolt comes right on out. And as you can see, that looks just like a Mauser bolt action rifle, because it is a Mauser, mini Mauser. Go ahead and stick the bolt back in the rifle. Over here, briefly touched upon this, this is your safety. Back is fire, forward is safe. Drop the magazine out of the gun, pinch with your index finger, pull the five round magazine out. So that's it, the set trigger. We have just the standard when you close the action. The trigger is in that position, very light, crisp, a little spongy at the end, a little, a tiniest bit of over travel, but that's a great trigger pull. Go ahead and recock the gun, push that trigger forward and it's literally a hair trigger. All you do is have to touch it, just think about going off, and it goes off. Then, of course, it has quite a bit more over travel. On top of the rifle right now, we have the CZ rings. These will uh, ship with the 527. They're one inch rings, but you can get 30 millimeter rings. Uh, so I had to try to find a one inch scope, and that's how I wound up with this tracked op optic on the, on the rifle. This thing has a magnification of three power all the way down here. It's a second focal plane scope all the way up to 15 power right there, which is more than enough for this rifle. Taking a look at the ballistics data on the Federal ammunition on the box, it says it has a muzzle velocity of about 2,350 feet per second, about six and a half inches of drop at 200 yards. At 300 yards, you get up to like 23 or 25 inches of bullet drop. So past 300 yards, this bullet's dropping off so much, it's just not effective. If you're gonna wanna shoot that far, you'll definitely wanna consider this rifle in 6.5 Grendel, not 7.62 by 39. All right, so let's see. We have on the track scope, you can see we have protective caps, and the, this is an MOA adjustment. So if you want to zero the scope out after you get it set, you just unscrew this top cap. It comes off, lift the turret dial, set it back to zero, and screw this top cap back on. They're clearly marked up and down. And it's a fairly decent scope. On this side, we do have parallax adjustment. To adjust it, you do have to pull the knob out, make your adjustments, and push it back in to lock it. You do not have locking turrets, but you have turret caps on here. And again, this is your magnification ring. And then back here on your ocular side, you can focus the reticle to your uh, eye. Everybody has different eyes. You know, Whatever prescription you may have, this will adjust for it, unless you have astigmatism. I don't know how that works if you don't have astigmatism. So the stock is really, really close on the right hand side here. I just want to double check and make sure I can get a piece of paper through there and see how much friction I feel. If I fold the paper in half twice, it's gonna touch. It's really, really close. No, it's still moving pretty freely. So maybe three folds. But that stock is really, really close, so it looks like it's floating and not touching. I think I'm going to load six this time, because if on a cold bore it puts another one right dead center. That'll be the third time it's done it today, which uh, that will uh, mean probably consistently do, does it. Does it. <laughs> English isn't my first language half the time. I don't know what is. Pretty darn close. Pretty darn close. Gonna go ahead and shoot that same target for five rounds. Use a set trigger all five times. Four or five. 
One, two, three, four, one more. Okay, there's our five shot group. I'm not gonna fire that sixth round because that cold bore shot was just a hair off that center, but pretty darn close. So cold bore shots are very, very consistent with this rifle using the Federal American Eagle 124 grain stuff. So here are those two cold bore shots. This one, and it's just left of the orange dot. Cut it in half. And here's the other one. I mean, in the exact same position, but we didn't get a number three. But that's still pretty impressive. This is our zeroing group where we we're making sure that the rifle was zeroed. Confirmation is zero. Seems like, uh, it looks like we're stuck in between settings on the track optic. Uh, one click makes us a little bit right, one click the other way makes us a little bit left. So here's our first five shot group and it, and it measures center to center 1.25 inches at 100 yards, which makes it about 1.2 MOA out of American Eagle affordable brass cased plinking ammo at 100 yards. That's pretty impressive. So you're getting just a little over MOA accuracy out of the rifle using that ammo. So now let's try it with some other flavors. Let's see what the steel case does. Let's see what the hunting ammo does. And then let's play around with those subsonics. So the non-set trigger is breaking at about three pounds, 8.4 ounces. I don't know if you can see that or not. Let's try one more. They advertise it at like five pounds, but it feels a lot lighter than that to me. Three pounds, 2.9 ounces. So yeah, it's, it's in the three pound range, which feels about right to me. Cause it's like I said, I really like the standard trigger. Let's go ahead and see what the set trigger measures at. <laughs> one pound 0.7 ounces. <laughs> Let's try one more time, make sure that I, uh, I didn't bump the trigger. Cause it's so light guys. I mean, it's, it's crazy. One pound trigger pull. That's, that's surprisingly, surprisingly light. If you guys don't understand trigger pull weights, that's crazy light. Okay one pound 0.6 ounces. So it's easily a one pound trigger pull when it's set to uh, its set trigger setting. So that's, that's really, really light. I wouldn't want to take a shot on a deer with that because you, if you got any adrenaline going or whatever, just touching that trigger one pound is nothing, guys. That'll set that gun off very, very easily. So you have those two options, a three pound trigger or a one pound trigger right out of the box. Let's see how the fusion hunting ammo does with regards to a 100 yard group. That cold bore shot's right there in the exact same spot. I'm gonna fire the other four into another group just so you guys can see that cold bore shot went right, right where I wanted it to once again. It's the third time it's done it today and that's with different ammunition. Wow. Okay, the can's not loose guys. That shot broke clean but it went six or more inches high and left completely wonky let's go ahead and finish this magazine out but that was almost like the can became loose or something but it's tight well that one's in the black but nowhere near 
where that cold bore shot went on the target above it. And we're getting back towards center. All right, so those last three grouped, we had one wild round. Now, you will see that happen occasionally with factory ammunition. You'll... <laughs> we got construction going on, guys. Sorry about the noise. Those are uh, concrete trucks rolling by behind us. But anyway, every once in a while, you'll see that wild flyer for no reason out of factory ammunition. So we're going to shoot another group with this and see if uh, we can repeat that wild shot, which we'll show you here in a minute. Good shot. That action just a bit rough. Don't like that. And that mirage is really starting to affect what I see. Looks like liquid down there. Okay, that's a great group. That second five shot group is really, really good. We didn't see that wild flyer. All right, let's go take a look at that. So here's that wild shot. It was a clean break, but it looked a lot worse down range. I thought it was like six inches, but it's only about three, maybe yeah, a little over three inches maybe. But the rest of the shots landed over here. Here's that cold bore shot. So this was with the Fusion, and these are the two cold bore shots with just the standard American Eagle. So I do like seeing that. That's pretty cool. So here's the five shot group that we fired after we got this wild flyer. I wanted to shoot one more five shot group. And this one is like right at one and a half inches or about 1.33 MOA. So with hunting ammunition, that's not bad performance at all. That will definitely harvest you a nice buck or doe. So um, pretty, pretty good to see that. It seems like maybe the American Eagle is just a little bit more accurate. The Fusion seems to be a little bit more warmer. You'll notice that uh, the point of impact is maybe a little bit higher than it was with the, uh, with the American Eagle. It seems like maybe there's a little bit more recoil even though the bullet weights are within a grain of each other. So yeah, pretty good performance. Let's see what the gun does with some generic steel cased, you know, military type ammunition. This is some Red Army Standard. Uh, this is made in Russia and it does feature a bimetal bullet. Does a bimetal bullet cause increased wear on your barrel? Yeah, if you're doing mag dumps and AR-15, it definitely will increase the wear uh, because it does have a, a steel, a mild steel jacket around the bullet. But slow firing on a bolt action, you're probably not going to wear your barrel out anytime soon. Not saying it can't be done, because some of you may actually try it. But uh, I wouldn't worry about shooting bimetal bullets through your bolt gun. So let's see what it does accuracy-wise, because again, a lot of people are going to wind up using this to plink with, and then using a different round like the Fusion to hunt with. So let's see if it gives a similar performance, if the point of impact is the same, and see what the accuracy looks like. <laughs> dead center cold bore shot dead center so i'm going to go ahead and load up one more round to shoot a five shot group but i want you guys to see this um you know a cold bore shot is what you're going to wind up using in the field and the fact that this rifle consistently with the exception of one time this afternoon every other time that cold bore shot has gone right dead center so i'm gonna go ahead and put one more round of the magazine and then we'll go ahead and uh shoot our five shot group. I want you guys to see this. That's really impressive. I like that. I know when I go out to take this rifle out hunting, the way it's set up right now, no matter what ammo I put in it that I commonly have on hand, that first shot is going to go right into the vitals. That is awesome. See, now that one went high and right.
definitely right just barely in the black ring high centered so this ammo is definitely definitely less accurate than the other two flavors we shot today yeah this is going to be a not a good group but for plinking yeah i wouldn't zero my rifle with this i definitely use the federal stuff all right yeah so that's kind of what i expected out of military ball uh, we'll take a look at it down range but if you're going to want to hunt this fusion seems to be good stuff and then for zeroing and plinking, it's not expensive. The American Eagle puts it has put down the best groups today. So, uh, yeah, if you want to plink, use some of the Red Army Standard. But I think I'd just stick with the Federal, to be honest with you. Let's go take a look at that group. All right, guys, so here's that cold bore shot. That time, with the Red Army Standard, it literally center punched that orange dot. It's not even visible anymore. So, again, that's really reassuring, knowing that the rifle can put that first round right where it counts, regardless of the ammo that we're losing, using. Here's all the other cold bore shots. So then we went ahead and fired a five-shot group, and this one measures about 2.8 inches, as you'll see on the ballistics calculations, or about 2.71 MOA, which isn't bad. I mean, if you had to use that Red Army standard for hunting inside of 200 yards, you're still going to get a decently placed shot if you do your part even though the ammo isn't all that accurate. You're definitely going to see the best performance, though, out of the Federal American Eagle, it seems, and even the hunting ammo like the Fusion. This is really, really quiet. So you should have he heard the gunshot, and then, you know, a fraction of a second later, you would have heard the round hit the steel target. I'll shoot the steel one more time. All right. Gives you an idea. It's really, really quiet. Now I'm just going to shoot the dirt for you. So that is really, really quiet. And definitely gives you some flexibility there ballistically. Just like the 300 Blackout. And it's grouping nicely, just shooting steel. So yeah, that's pretty neat. So the sub 62 by 39, you have that flexibility of doing the subsonics. They are not inexpensive, but you can roll your own. If you're using the federal brass, for example, you just have to make sure you get 3.10 or 3.11 diameter bullets in the 220 grain weight range, and you can make your own subsonic loads. So yeah, that's pretty neat. I like that flexibility with the sub 62 by 39 offering. The 527 American is an interesting rifle. There are things I like about the gun and things I definitely dislike about the gun. I do enjoy having the capability of shooting sub 60 by 39, being able to pick up subsonic loads for it, full power loads. There's all sorts of ammunition currently available for the caliber, so it makes sense to have it in an action like this, which is, you know, as I mentioned before, the mini Mauser action. The one thing that this particular rifle has is a slight fitment issue, but it doesn't relate or, or contribute to any type of accuracy um, degradation, so I'm not going to really ding it on that. It's more or less cosmetic. The one thing I really don't like about the rifle guys is the bolt action itself. Now, when you have a loaded magazine in it, it becomes even more difficult, but the fact that I have to use a special technique to get the bolt to go home smoothly, it would prevent me from ever using this in the field and would relegate it to target shooting. If I'm going to target shoot, I'm probably not going to use 762 by 39 I would opt for the 6.5 Grindle version or maybe even the 300 Blackout. Now, I don't know if it's just this particular rifle that has the, the issue of the bolt hanging up or not. So <clears throat> if it has that type of a problem with the 300 Blackout and uh, 6.5 Grindle, once again, that's kind of a major hang up for me. I'll contact the guys at CZ and see if perhaps I just have a defective rifle or if this necessity to handle the bolt in a special way to get it to close smoothly uh, is actually a feature of the rifle. So that alone would keep me from wanting to purchase the gun.
Guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best way to do that is to become a Patreon supporter. We're 100% viewer supported, which is how we bring you honest, unbiased, as humanly possible, information as we possibly can. So follow the link down below and consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Also swing by and check out coppercustom.com. And we are Twitch gamers. So if you guys like to join us in a stream, become a Patreon, send us a note, tell us that you're on the PSN network. We can connect that way via being friends. And then you can join us in a live stream over on Twitch. Thanks for 11 years of support. We'll talk to you guys soon.